Yeah, how's it going, man? Good. Tell me what's going on. All right. So Monday, this Monday, uh, after work, I was sitting in the parking lot. I went to Walmart real quick. And when I came out of Walmart, I turned the truck on and it was running. Uh, I was responding to some emails while it was running. And uh, it popped up uh, service charging system now on the dash. Okay. Um, so I turned the truck off and it got out, locked the doors, unlocked the doors, got back in, turned the truck back on, and it was gone. It, everything, it drove fine. Everything acted fine. There was no weird things going on until this morning. So, you know, 30, 24 to 30 hours later. I left my house to go to work this morning. I uh, went to get on the highway, and right before I went to get on the highway, it didn't say service charging system. It said charging system failure. Okay. So I turned around, came right back home, um, started doing a little bit of diag that I, whatever I can do, I have a little bit of knowledge. Uh, I just am not up to date with all this new electronic stuff. So back in May... I had to put a battery in the vehicle. Okay. I put a replacement battery in it that was an AGM of the same size and quality of what the original uh, Ford Motor Company battery was. I was told it needed to be recoded for the truck, but then I also was told by a mechanic that I could just do a BMS reset via the dash, and it would be fine. So that, that was six months ago. I haven't had any issues. But then this morning when it did charging system failure, luckily I made it home because I wasn't very far away. I lost power steering, I lost power brakes, and my transmission didn't want to shift. Okay. Um, when I put the voltmeter on the battery, I had 11.9 volts, but uh, no matter what I did, revving up or down, uh, I couldn't get it to, to show me any more volts than that. Um, I did some digging. I pulled off the cover to the 300 amp use that's under the bus bar, the positive bus bar on the, um, on the fuse block. Okay. I checked all of those. Those all checked out. I had the same voltage across, um, the same, what was in the battery, the 11.9 or whatever it was. Okay. Uh, so that 300 amp fuse was fine as far as I could tell. Um, there was no dead spot. There were no dead lugs on it. Uh, so I assumed it was alternator. Um, truck has 170 something thousand miles on it. So it's like, okay, whatever. An alternator is, it is what it is. Uh, took the alternator out, took it over to my local auto parts store. They tested it. It failed. So I bought a new one, put the new one in, went to start the truck a little bit ago, and it did the same thing, except it went back to a uh, service charging system. Okay. Um, it didn't say charging system fault. It didn't, it only did that this morning once and I came home and turned it off. Okay. Uh, but now it's doing the same thing. And when I put my code reader on there, it's got a live data stream. That's the only thing I can see off of it. I can read codes. It's a very basic code reader, but it does have a live data stream and it shows me overall voltage of the vehicle. Um, no matter where I place the RPMs, I cannot get any more than 11.2 volts out of it. Okay. And I'm sorry, are there any codes in the computer? No, nope. it's not thrown a code yet. Oh, wow. Okay. So the alternator isn't charging. That's, that, that's what it seems like, but, uh, you know, it's a brand new alternator. Well, just because the alternator is new doesn't mean that it's charging, right? It doesn't mean that I it's... Know. I don't, I don't want to hear what you're about to tell me because I just spent five hours replacing that alternator. <laughs> what a nightmare that was. Well, you want, you want the answer that's going to fix it, don't you? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I gotcha. Um, so you think replace the alternator again, take it out, they'll get it, they'll get it refunded and get a new one. And before I come home, have them throw the new one on their bench and make sure it's charging. No, I wouldn't do that at this point. No, not at all. What I would recommend that you do is check the inputs to the alternator before doing anything else. And really, that should have been done first before the alternator was replaced. How do I do that? How do I go about doing that? Let me read this to you. Before extensive testing, load test the power at the white red wire at the alternator. 
Uh, it should have good, okay. good enough power to light a test light. If the wire fails to load test, check fuse 23 in the battery junction box. If the fuse is good and has good power, the white wire with the red stripe is, is damaged between the battery junction box and the alternator. Repair or replace okay. the wire as needed. So I did do that this morning. I did check fuse 23 this morning. Okay. And it was fine. It was giving me the same voltage that the bus bar was giving me. It okay. was giving me the same voltage the battery had. This is at the alternator? So, uh, no, this was at fuse number 23. Okay, so we didn't check it at the alternator, though. No, no, I did not. I did, you can't get it. I couldn't. You can't get in there. I physically can't get in there unless I pull all of the intake tubes off. Okay. Because it's this model year, it's up under the bottom of the EcoBoost. Okay. You know, all the way, all the way down the bottom driver side corner. So, in order to get in there, even just to get to the plug, I got to remove almost every one of the intake tubes, including the air box itself. So, this is what you're looking at. So, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm not even going to tell you what to do. I'm going to let you make the decision. How's that? Since, okay. since, since you're telling me it can't be done, here are your options. You can pull that old that the alternate that you just installed. You can pull it out and you can bring it to the parts store and have them check it, and it might check out good. Or you could check the inputs to the alternator as th what should be done, and that's what I would recommend that you do. So the white and red, and then there's a the big red wire to the back of the alternator need to have battery voltage, and then there's two other wires on that plug that go back to the PCM. You could you could do a visual inspection. You could check the resistance of those two wires. No matter what you do, you need to check the wiring to and from that alternator to make sure that the inputs are correct. So when I pulled the old one out this morning, um, I did inspect the plug. I checked the wires. There was no corrosion, no cracking. The insulation was fine, and the heat wrap around the wire seemed to be fine. Um, how would I go about checking those wires? I have to get back in there, pull the plug off, and then check continuity from that white and red wire to where's the other end well again remember that the white and red wire comes from fuse 23. okay so if there's battery voltage on fuse 23 all you get all you have to do is just go to the white and red wire at the alternator and check power there okay and then that okay. bi the big red wire you know that bolts to the back of the alternator that needs to have battery voltage at all time okay and then and then the other two wires <clears throat> you know they're going to be, a, I think, turn on wires or a sense wire, and they're very delicate wires. So I, I don't think you can check voltage on that those circuits with a voltmeter, maybe a lab scope. But in your situation, you would basically just want to do a good visual inspection of those wires and then ohm them out, check the resistance between the alternator and the PCM to make sure there's continuity. You know, make sure you can move the harness around, make sure, you know, we're, we're, we continue to get continuity on those wires. So you have to unplug the connector at the PCM, unplug the connector at the alternator, and make sure that you know there's there's good connection between, you know, both sides of the wire, and both of them. So, so quick question for you. Also, the the sensor on the negative post on the battery for this system. Is there a chance that sensor is bad? Yes, I think I think it's possible. Is there a way to check it before replacing it or no? You know, I I don't know of a manual way to check it. I could do some digging for you. Um, I, I would think that you should be able to check the signal, for, you know, on your scan tool under live data to see if it's just, if it's reading correctly. Yeah, unfortunately the scanner that I have, it doesn't, it doesn't 